Jane Mansfield was one of the biggest sex symbols of the 1950s and early 60s. She was a member of a very exclusive club of blonde bombshells that the press often dubbed the three M's, the other two being Marilyn Monroe and Mamie Van Doren. In this video, we'll be honing in on Jane Mansfield's latter years, performing strip teases and doing burlesque. But just be advised, this is one video not suitable for younger viewers. Faxverse presents photos of Jane Mansfield's burlesque days show more than we bargained for. From Hollywood to Vegas Known for her curvaceous figure and over-the-top personality, Jane Mansfield was a successful film star, burlesque performer, and tabloid personality that 20th Century Fox once called Marilyn Monroe king-sized. In the 50s and 60s, Mansfield starred on both the stage and screen. At first, Hollywood was reluctant to work with her due to her very prominent bust, but after she posed for Playboy magazine in 1955, she became a much sought-after star. In 1958, she married Mr. Universe Mickey Hargitay. The two met at one of Mae West's stage shows, where Hargitay used to perform in the chorus. Immediately after meeting, Mickey and Jane became completely infatuated with each other, much to the dismay of West. Eventually, they got married and had three children together, one of whom is the lovely Mariska Hargitay, best known for starring in Law & Order SVU. Mansfield also had two other children from other marriages. After getting pregnant back to back to back, Hollywood began to lose interest in Mansfield, an actress who at one point was poised to fill the shoes of Marilyn Monroe. Instead of returning to Hollywood, Mansfield's career eventually experienced a second wind with her stage performances in Vegas. In February of 1968, she launched a strip tease review called The Tropicana Holiday at the Tropicana Las Vegas Hotel and Casino. The review was produced by Monty Proser and Mickey Hargitay served as Jane's co-star. The show was initially given a four-week contract, but following its initial success, that was extended to eight. Opening night raised $20,000 for the nonprofit March of Dimes, which in today's money is about $188,000. Mansfield earned $25,000 a week for her portrayal of Trixie Devoon in the show. At the time, her contract with 20th Century Fox was still paying her $2,500 a week, so she was doing quite well for herself. And just in case Hargitay accidentally dropped her while he twirled her around, Mansfield had a million-dollar policy with Lloyd's of London. The following year, Jane returned to the Tropicana, making $30,000 a week. Once again, her show filled seats, so she got her contract extended not once but twice. In 1960, Vegas's Dunes Hotel and Casino launched The House of Love, another review dreamed up by Mansfield and Hargitay. For the show, she received $35,000 a week, the highest salary of her career. At the shows, both at the Tropicana and Dunes, Mansfield donned a wardrobe that featured a gold mesh dress adorned with sequins to cover up her chest and pubic region. The outfit proved to be quite controversial, with the media referring to it as Jane Mansfield and a few sequins. Outside of Vegas in early 1963, Jane Mansfield performed her first club show outside of Vegas at the Plantation Supper Club in Greensboro, North Carolina. She earned $23,000 one week. After that, she performed at the Iroquois Gardens in Louisville, Kentucky, banking a similar amount. After touring around the country, Jane returned to Las Vegas in 1966, but this time around her show was held on Fremont Street, blocks away from the Strip where the Dunes and Tropicana were. Her final nightclub act, French Dressing, was staged at the Latin Quarter in New York City in 1966. That performance was repeated at the Tropicana in a modified form that ran for six weeks. Mansfield's nightclub career inspired several films, documentaries, and even a musical album. In 1962, Fox released a recording of her review, The House of Love, in the form of an album, Jane Mansfield Busts Up Las Vegas. In 1960's Too Hot to Handle, Mansfield played a burlesque entertainer named Midnight Franklin. Several years later, she played a Sin City showgirl named Tawny Downs in 1968's The Las Vegas Hillbillies. In 1967, Mansfield and Hargitay, as well as Constance Moore and Clara Ward, were guest stars in the independent documentary film Spree. It served as a travelogue of Juliet Prowse and Vic Damone. 
In the film, Mansfield is seen stripping and singing the song Promise Her Anything from the movie Promises Promises. Later in her career, Mansfield branched out to doing far more than just burlesque performances. She frequently made special appearances at nightclubs and special engagements while also going on tour. By 1960, just seven years before her passing, she was making personal appearances for everything from drugstore openings to supermarket promotions, netting roughly $10,000 per appearance. She wasn't shy. Jane Mansfield was ahead of her time. Decades before body positivity was in vogue, she proudly embraced her body and wasn't afraid to show it off. Sure, some considered her to be plus-sized at a time that it wasn't considered the most desirable thing to be, but she owned her curves and wasn't afraid to flaunt them. The mother of five shamelessly stripped to her birthday suit, or at least close to it, on stage for many years. But she also earned a special place in cinema history for being the first American actress to appear nude on film in a post-silent film era Hollywood feature. Actor and producer Tommy Noonan managed to convince Mansfield to bear it all on screen when she appeared in the starring role in his 1963 film Promises Promises. The film's poster didn't mince words when it promoted what the feature was all about. In big bold words at the top, the poster read, Now see all of Jane Mansfield. Playboy subsequently published nude photos of Mansfield on the film's set in its June 1963 issue. This led to obscenity charges getting pressed against Hugh Hefner in a Chicago court. Several U.S. cities, including Cleveland, Ohio, banned the film outright, but otherwise it enjoyed a great deal of commercial success. Anything for Publicity Jane Mansfield was well aware that she could leverage her looks and sex appeal to dial up some much-needed publicity. In fact, if it weren't for a few of the salacious publicity stunts that she pulled, she might not have achieved the same level of success that she did. In January of 1955, Mansfield made an appearance at a press junket promoting the film Underwater in Silver Springs, Florida. Purposefully trying to steal the attention away from the film's star, Jane Russell, Mansfield wore a skimpy red bikini that was lent to her by her photographer friend, Peter Gowland. When Jane dove into the swimming pool, her top came off, and the resulting photos created a sudden burst of media attention. Simply put, the press took the bait hook, line, and sinker. The ensuing publicity led both Playboy and Warner Brothers to approach her with lucrative offers. Later that year, while attending a movie party and later at S Club, Mansfield's dress fell down to her waist twice in the same evening. Then, in February 1958, she decided to go topless at a carnival celebration in Rio de Janeiro. Similarly, in June of 1962, Jane shimmied her way out of her polka-dotted dress at a nightclub in Rome. Perhaps most infamously, Mansfield's breasts were the focus of a ballsy publicity stunt devised to detract press attention away from actress Sophia Loren at a dinner party held in Loren's honor. Photos of Mansfield's bosom were published in papers and gossip rags throughout the world. The most famous photo showed Loren gazing directly at Mansfield's cleavage. When Mansfield leaned over the table, everything pretty much came spilling on out. At the time, the world, particularly the moral majority, was quick to condemn Mansfield's publicity stunts. But there was no denying that they helped make her one of the most controversial and thus well-known stars on the planet. Still, by the late 1950s, Mansfield began to generate way too much negative publicity due to her repeated exposure of her breasts in those carefully crafted wardrobe malfunctions. Because of her exploits, Richard Blackwell, her wardrobe designer, dropped her as a client. In 1967, the LA Times wrote that Mansfield often confused publicity and notoriety with celebrity and stardom, and that the end result is distasteful to the public. Jane Mansfield was tragically killed instantly on June 29, 1967, when the car she was riding in struck the rear of a trailer truck on Route 90 just east of New Orleans. She was just 34 years old when her flame was suddenly snuffed out. But Mansfield's legacy has continued to live on. Sure, she was the controversy queen, but she knew how to use her scandal and God-given good looks to her advantage, in a way few at the time came close to accomplishing. Long before Instagram and reality TV, Mansfield knew how to capture the public's attention and use publicity to help her land lucrative contracts and opportunities. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Jane Mansfield was making the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of dollars a week with her Vegas reviews? Let us know in the comments section below.